Beatrice, if she'll come and share her testimony um, th this morning. Thanks, Beatrice. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, it's not easy to stand up here and talk about your personal life, your failures, and your bad decisions. But there are three reasons why I'm doing this, mainly three, three reasons. The first is this is not about me, it's the testimony of Jesus Christ, who is God and Savior. It is about what he has done in my life and what he can do in any, anyone's life, and he can do greater things, believe me. <laughs> the second one, I think it's important to get to know each other more deeply, and I hope this can further strengthen our personal relationships as brothers and sisters. The third one is if someone is listening here or anywhere and has problem or is going through painful circumstances, I want to let you know that Jesus is real, he's alive, and that he's the only almighty God who can change your life. Amen. I was born in Colombia. I'm the last of 11 brothers and sisters of a Catholic family. I used to go to church now and again especially for ceremonies such as marriages, baptism, and funerals. I claim to believe in God, but my life proved the contrary. I didn't know him. Believed to be good, I was judicious in the study, and meet my duties as good daughter and sister. Um, we, were a very, we are a very close family. My father demanded good moral behavior but he didn't set an example. I remember him disappearing on weekends to get drunk with friends and to share with other women. As a result of that, I have other six <laughs> siblings um, by my father. I promised to myself that I would not allow any man to do to me what he had done to my, to my mother. When I was 18 years, I commenced medical school and started to conform even more to the world. I started to see things like lies, fornication, and adultery, just to mention a few, like normal things to do because everybody was doing those things, so I think that doesn't matter if I do it <laughs> or if everybody else does. But deep inside, I knew they were not right. At the age of 28, after finished my medical school, I met the man who would be my first husband. He became destructive and verbally aggressive, when he was drunk especially. Normally on weekends, but never touched me. In the meantime, I was doing my postgraduate studies in anesthesia, and I divorced after four years of marriage. I started to live my life as a single again until I met my second husband. Despite being always very loved and respected by my family, I felt empty. I felt like I had failed my family, society, and God, and that I didn't deserve forgiveness from him. I managed to mask it very well with my work, practicing sports, and new relationship, and my new relationship. At that point, a colleague invited me, um, and me and my partner, to go to church. And I remember saying, I'll go to see, but I will not get too involved. <laughs> <laughs> Deep inside, I thought I did not deserve God's forgiveness. But the Lord, in his great goodness and mercy, had other plans. The 2nd of May of 1999, the very first time I heard that if I repented from my sins, it didn't matter which, which sin, and returned my heart to Jesus, believing and accepting his sacrifice in the cross for me, he could forgive me and I could walk with him 
and have eternal life because he is risen from the dead and he is alive today. The same day, I decided to repent and accepted Jesus and started my first love with the Lord. I wanted to know him, to know him more and more every day through his word and decided to be baptized on the 4th of June the next year, 2000. My partner, <coughs> sorry, also was baptized after that, but I did not see in him evidence of being a true believer. We decided to emigrate to Italy, <coughs> looking for better opportunities, and we got married prior to travel in order to expedite the process. Before traveling, I noticed the traits of aggressiveness when he drank alcohol and remember going to church, asking for advice, what about what to do if things got worse. I didn't want to disobey God. I mean, I didn't want to lose that peace. They advised me to fight for my marriage. And they said, uh, it's the devil trying to separate you too and yourself from God. So I was determined to do so. I was determined to fight for it. We arrived to Italy in, in April 2001. I had to wait a year for a the approval of my medical degrees in Europe. In the meantime, I found a job as a nurse in a hospice offered by a Catholic priest. From day one, I began to experience the aggressiveness of my husband, verbally and physically. And his consumption of alcohol was increasing. I tried to fight with the few spiritual weapons that I had. At that time, I was a baby Christian, so I slowly walk away from the, from the word of God, no longer read it. At a certain point, we found a small evangelical church without a pastor, attended every Sunday and prayed occasionally and when the situation became difficult. I did not talk to anyone of the matter. I was ashamed, only to mention. <laughs> and too embarrassed to speak about it to anyone of my friends or family. The situation was becoming worse, reaching the limit of threatening to harm my family in Colombia if I said anything to the police. I felt increasingly sad and powerless. I felt that God had abandoned me, and I didn't know, I didn't not understand because I was trying to obey him by staying with my husband as I was advised by my church in Colombia. If he, I wasn't converted, I would have abandoned him way before. I do not remember how I came to know to a psychologist Christian pastor in Milan and went to see him. After first seeing uh, me alone and then with my husband, he advised me to abandon him and to leave the city and the country as soon as possible because he thought that my life was in danger. And he showed me, sorry. Sorry. And he showed me on the Bible that God didn't want that kind of life for me. I felt liberated. And from that moment, I started to plan my separation. We sold the apartment, and he kept all the money from our bank account and from the house. So I couldn't go anywhere. Thanks God, I, rem I remained mentally adequate to continue to do my job. I remember times when going to the bathroom to cry while I was working. I went to live for a few months with a couple of nurses from our hospital in a small room until I could raise some money with my job and decide to take charge of my life without God. I still received text message from my ex-husband. I started to look for new alternatives outside Italy and came to the UK in September 2005 when I met Ivan. I felt strong strongly attracted by him, but I refused to start another relationship at that point. Returned to Colombia, giving myself time to think what to do 
and looking for possibilities of work. Ivan continued his relentless courtship mess <laughs> messages through poetry, promises, and so forth, until finally I decided to return to Italy and start again. I came to England in February 2006, and since then we have been together. I felt it was the best thing that had happened to my life. I did not think of doing anything wrong. Never read the Bible again, never attended the church, till 2009 after starting working shortly in August 2008. I remember <clears throat> there was a person reading the Bible while waiting for the shuttle bus to go to the Preston Hospital. And for God's grace, we started talking, and I claimed to be a Christian, <laughs> though I was not a church goer. <laughs> He invited me to his church and one Sunday felt the necessity to go, but could not find the address. Then I found another one online and I started to go to church, Evangelical Free Church in Shorley. Initially alone, I began to read the Bible again and one night reading 1 Corinthians 9.10, which read, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit, inherit the kingdom of God. I felt a deep pain, and this was a real pain, I'm telling you. So I was, uh, as I never experienced before, I, I was, uh, because I was, I had failed God and could not stop crying that night. Ivan didn't know everything, anything. I asked forgiveness for my sins and I started again to walk with the Lord with a firm, firm commitment to obey him. I prayed for direction in relation to what to do with my relationship and asked for confirmation in everything I did. I didn't want to marry a non-Christian, and Ivan wasn't a Christian. The first answer to my prayers came. Ivan began to come to church without me asking. It was a hard time trying to answer all his questions regarding my faith, but the Lord do everything perfectly. Though these were difficult times, he allowed this to happen for me to grow quicker and in my faith and wisdom. I was studying the Bible and spending time with the Lord as never before. After a couple of years of attending church with me, Ivan became a believer, and we got married in tw on 28th of September 2013. Ivan was baptized on Easter 2016. I remember the presence of the Lord in the smallest detail of planning my wedding, even in the choosing of my dress. The weather forecast for that day, for the day of our wedding, was not good. I asked him to give me a full day of sunshine at our wedding day as confirmation that I was doing the right thing <laughs> before him. <laughs> and he did it <laughs> by blessing our marriage with a sunny day. <laughs> Since then, I've been used to bring other members of friends and family to the Lord. I have a Christian, loving, caring husband, a marvelous new family, all of you, and a spiritual daughter, Martha, whom we had the privilege to teach and witness every day in our house, 24-7 for five years. <laughs> uh, about the Lord's love, grace, forgiveness, justice, and much more. When she first came to us, she was 22. She didn't have any direction or purpose in her life. It wasn't always easy, and she ended going to a Bible college and is now married to Carlos, who is a pastor, and they serve the Lord in Spain. The rest of the story is known to you. We are still not perfect, I feel his presence and help in all aspects of our life, and when we face difficulties, he always provides the strength and guide to go through it. Family, friends, government, science. 
will fa can fail you, but not the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ he is wonderful and faithful. Only he can bring peace and wholeness to our life, despite our inability to love him and obey as he only deserved it. Praise his holy name. Finally, I would like to finish with this word from the Bible, uh, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And the other one is Matthew 11, 28, 29. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Thank you.